let's talk about PlayStation Vita overclocking. If you don't know what PlayStation Vita overclocking is, we made a video about that. You can check out the news, what it is, and what it does for your system. We also will be releasing a video later on today about the benefits and the disadvantages of overclocking your PlayStation Vita with different tests on different games. So you will be able to see that to really determine whether or not you want to do this. Lastly, it's very important to note whether or not your system is on firmware 3.60. If it is above that threshold, then unfortunately you will not be able to overclock your PlayStation Vita. You have to be on 3.60 or less. If you are under that, well, there's a lot of videos on YouTube showing you how to get to 3.6 without passing that threshold links are in the description right let's get started so the first thing we're gonna do is get a custom homebrew on the PlayStation Vita we're gonna be downloading one called Henkaku and it's actually very easy to install so the first thing we're gonna do is jump into the web browser and once we do that we're going to click web search the one we're going to press in is henkaku.xyz like I have here if you don't have it, then go ahead and type it in manually. Once you do that, let's jump into Google search and click the first link. Right, go ahead and click the install button. Two things will happen for you and it's completely random. Number one, it might just start installing automatically. You'll see a black screen with a bunch of code. Just let that happen. If not, you'll see something that says error has occurred. If this is the case, you'll see a loading bar. Wait for that loading bar to go and when it's done, press OK. Just keep pressing OK until you are complete. Eventually, you'll get to the black screen like the rest of us. So the first step is complete, and technically, you now have Henkaku installed, but a very older version of it. So let's go ahead, click that new app that you see there, Modular Shell, and you're gonna see a new prompt appear. It's gonna ask for a new update. Go ahead and run that new update, and you'll see it complete by itself. When it's done, let's back out to the main menu. Congrats, you have Henkaku installed. Right, so now you have Homebrew on your PlayStation Vita. This is completely safe. You can delete it if you want. You can stop here and say, you know what, I'm not doing this. You don't have the overclock yet, you just have Homebrew. So down in the description, I have two links. One for an application called FileZilla and another one for the actual plugin itself. So once you've opened it, go ahead and click File, Site Manager, and New Site. We're going to create a host entry for the PlayStation Vita. On your PlayStation Vita, go ahead and open the application called Vita Shell. Let that load up, and once it's loaded, hold the select button on your PlayStation Vita, and a prompt should appear. So you're gonna see some numbers on your screen, and this is important for FileZilla. This is your port number and your host number. You see the colon in the middle, everything above the colon is your host number. Then, for the port number, that is the four digits behind the colon. So go ahead and put those numbers in there as well. You have to make sure that your PlayStation Vita and your computer is on the same Wi-Fi network or else this is not going to work. Go ahead and press connect. And now on the right side where it says remote site and file name, these are all the files for your PlayStation Vita system. Now on to the next part. You're going to take that plugin V1.0 folder that you downloaded, enter into that and you're going to see a folder called plugins. You're going to drag that folder into a folder called UX zero just go ahead click and drag and that's it now down in the description there is a third folder it's called vitamin go ahead download that file and do the same thing click and drag the vitamin file into the root of that same folder okay so now let's back out of this little pop-up into the actual root folder itself we're gonna jump into the UX0 folder where we've just installed these new applications. You're gonna see something that says vitamin. You want to actually click on that and it's gonna tell you, do you want to install? You're gonna say yes. It is going to confirm that and you're gonna say yes again. This will download a new application on your home screen. Okay, congratulations. At this point, your PlayStation Vita has overclocking enabled. You have homebrew. This is all great. This is all fantastic. You've done it, my man. You haven't messed up just yet. With that said, there is a little caveat to the system softwares we've just installed. Think of this as a tethered jailbreak. If you ever turn off your PlayStation Vita, all of this will no longer work, and you're going to have to redo it all over again. 
You can put your PlayStation Vita on standby, you can charge it normally, but if it dies or you actually turn it off, it will no longer work. You have to redo all of this over again, format your memory card most likely. Just don't let it die. Right, so if I haven't scared you off already, let's move on. Like I said earlier, you have to back up games in order for them to work. What they call this is dumping files on your PlayStation Vita. You're actually saving the CD-ROM files onto your actual PlayStation Vita. Now we're almost done. In order to actually dump Vita games, what you want to do is put in the physical cartridge into your PlayStation Vita and open up the application called Vitamin. It should be somewhere in your Vita, it's a new application. Open up that and follow the instructions. It's going to take a very, very long time to dump the Vita games. Once it's done, congratulations, you can now do one more step. Go ahead and take out the physical cartridge, delete the little bubble, and we're going to now install it digitally. Enter back into Vita Shell, go back into UX0, find the new folder called Vitamin, and install that game. Again, this is going to take a bit of time depending on the size of the game. Now, now you can rejoice. You can now overclock PlayStation Vita games. Go ahead and open up that game, let it load completely, and once you're actually able to control the game, hold the select button and let go you're gonna see a new dialog. Just keep doing this a bunch of times, sometimes it doesn't do it initially, but eventually you'll see that dialog box pop up. And here, under GPU, you can set it up to 222 megahertz. Time to play games in 60 frames per second, baby. Right, quick test. Here's Need for Speed Most Wanted running on stock, and here it is running on the GPU overclock. This game is actually capped at 30 frames per second, so you're not going to see a drastic increase here. But for games that are uncapped, you can see 60 frames on some of them. So if you like this video, show me some love by hitting that like button and subscribing. And if you ever fell into any problems during this whole installation, go ahead and comment down below and I'll be sure to help you. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.